Next quote. The flurry of changes imposed on D'Antoni's staff has summoned the coaching community wondering if the Rockets are trying to nudge D'Antoni toward the exit. Tweeted Mark Stein about Mike D'Antoni. So, Bo, do you get the sense that the Rockets are trying to nudge out D'Antoni? Oh, yeah. Because here's one thing we know about Mike D'Antoni. You make it to where he doesn't enjoy coming to work anymore and he will quit. Mm. Right? He's done this before. And I'm not saying this is shade to him, to be clear. But he's not sitting around waiting on you to fire him. If he thinks that time is up here, he's going to walk. He walked in Phoenix in that way. He walked in uh, was the last job he had. New York. Yeah, he walked there. Well, he's in the LA. last job he had. But, no, he's going to walk. And, look. It looks like they extended that contract. They gave him one year. He wants an extension because he thinks the lame duck year is a bad idea, and he's absolutely correct. And so what do they do leading into this one year? Fire all of his assistant coaches. That's what you do when you're trying to get somebody to quit. This feels like we are meeting Tillman Fertitta, the new owner of the Rockets, for really the first time. Because we've heard bits and pieces from him, interviews and such, but now we're getting the sense that he is deeply unsatisfied with the fact that he only has, by some lights, the second best team over the last couple years in the NBA. My frustration with the owner, who is, I think, going about this in a very ham-fisted way, let's get the assistants out of here such that the head coach leaves, is that the guy was very, very specific about being underneath the luxury tax last offseason. He has since offered quotes that sound ridiculous to me, Bo, where he says, oh, that was an accident. I didn't even know we were doing that. But go ask anybody who's been watching the Rockets transactions how carefully they sold off draft picks, let Bob Mute go, let Ariza go to be under that tax. This offseason, they have a chance to spend more money. They need to do that, too. Yeah, but here's my question. Who's moving these assistants out of there? Is that Fertitta who's doing that? Because Fertitta's the guy that said that Mike D'Antoni was going to come back. Is he the one that's moving those assistants out? Or is your man Daryl the one moving the assistants out? And if there's a disagreement between the owner and the head of basketball ops about what to do, this whole thing could turn disastrous totally. Toronto next year. My bet, though, is that the head of basketball ops does not do very much without the owner giving his blessing, oh. even as he says things. Oh, no, I'm not saying, saying he might be with it, I'm saying, but that doesn't mean who's driving this, right? Or is that the compromise? We don't fire Mike, we just fire the assistants. Mm. Good luck, Houston. Would it make sense for the Rockets to get rid of Mike D'Antoni? My father moving oh. fast like that Rockets <laughs> offense. He read that unusually fast, did he not? Uh, Mike D'Antoni's staff is being changed. You know that Daryl Morey is an evolver. You know that the owner of the Rockets is impatient. So if he's a lame duck as he is and he wants a three-year extension, you can understand it. I also understand why the Rockets are looking to improve at every turn. They've gotten stars to come there. They've done the hard part with Daryl Morey in getting even a Dwight Howard to come there and then moving him so you could get another star in Chris Paul. They've evolved as far as they can with Mike D'Antoni. They're not going to get a whole lot better. So if they're looking for winning in the margins, it makes sense that they would look somewhere else. Yeah, but Mike D'Antoni is not the problem for this Rocket team. The problem is the team we just discussed, the Golden State Warriors. And as long as that team is intact, it doesn't matter who's coaching the Rockets, that team's going to be pretty difficult to beat. But Dan, I will tell you, the coach and the team that's come closest to beating that team is the team that's been coached by Mike D'Antoni right. the last two years. I mean, they were a game away on their home court two years ago in the conference finals, and they gave them a good series here in the Western Conference semifinals. And so, no, I think Mike D'Antoni should absolutely get the three-year extension that he coveted. I think we all believe that that team is maxing out what it can get from those players. It's maxing it out because he told you when he got there that James Harden will be a guy who can do 15 assists a game. And James Harden himself said, Coach, be tripping he's crazy James Harden has become better because of Mike D'Antoni but we are at the ceiling it doesn't get any better than 53s a game you want to see my impersonation of Mike D'Antoni in the playoff uh oh here we go oh please here yeah oh here it goes it starts slowly in the first round the second round it becomes a little more violent and here we've arrived at the third round here's the third round look at that. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> well, Bon, if you were Dan Tony and you just saw your assistants canned, how would you feel about your status in Houston? Well, it depends if they were canned or you said, we got to make some big changes here. And I understand starting with my own staff, we don't know what order this was done. We don't know if Dan Tony signed off on this or not. Not yet from the reporting we have today. So to me, this doesn't happen unless Mike D'Antoni has some say. I mean, that doesn't, the Houston Rockets don't strike me as that kind of 
organization. They are not dysfunctional. They haven't been able to win a championship lately, but they seem to know what they're doing. So you're so saying thought, D'Antoni has a hand in the releasing of these if, assistants? If not a hand, then a nod. I mean, I don't think you're Mike D'Antoni. You got some club. You said, I want this job. I want to do that. I want to keep trying right, this. Right. We got a roster. I got a GM who knows how to acquire people and shake things up. You don't, you don't just, just walk in the office one day. This is not the Lakers saying, oh, by the way, you got to bring in Mo Larry and Curly. This is not that. So, Tony, I, I think that Mike D'Antoni has expressed publicly and privately he wants his job. I take him at his word. I, if I'm Mike D'Antoni, I stay. I, if I've got James Harden and Chris Paul, if I just won 53 games and the only team I lose to is Golden State, which is on the verge of being an incredible dynasty, I yeah. stay. If you don't want me, fire me and give me the money. But I want to stay there because I've got a good team. And if you don't, if you're Houston and if you're Maury or you're the owner, if somebody doesn't want D'Antoni, you tell me who's going to be better. Mike D'Antoni, here's a number you might like. His last three seasons in Houston, he's 173 and 73. You think Kurt Rambis would like to be plus 100? You think Byron <laughs> Scott or Tim Floyd would like to be plus 100? So if I'm Dan Tony, I stay. Let me ask you this real quickly. In the, in the assessment of that team and how they get along, would you consider trading Chris Paul to LeBron and the Lakers because you know LeBron and Chris Paul love each other, admire, respect each other on, off the court, are very, 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 very close friends. I might do that. Would you make that deal? I might, but that, you know, but I won 53 games, and I want that team again. Yeah, I agree with that.